given my lifetime infatuation with firearms and firearm hunting, many of you are going to be surprised to know that I also actually like air rifles when you use them within their limitations. Air rifles definitely have a place in hunting, in my opinion. It's kind of a small niche, but one that only an air rifle is going to fill. Because of my background in hunting, competition shooting, gunsmithing, reloading, and hunting product development, I have a really unique perspective on air guns as they apply to hunting. Mainly, I'm a realist who understands the limitations and ethical application of an air rifle when it comes to hunting. You know, I, I know I'm going to get some hate mail for this, but I'll just go ahead and say it. Most air gunners, even the so-called experts, have very little knowledge, well, very little real knowledge of ballistics, shooting fundamentals, or real hunting. Most of these guys are on the same level as the dudes that run around in tactical gear on the weekends playing uh, airsoft or paintball. <laughs> and uh, I cringe every time I hear one of these guys complain about the recoil on their air gun. The host of one of the biggest air gun channels on YouTube thinks that wind has no effect on the ballistics of pellets. <laughs> Another highly regarded expert on YouTube thinks that U.S. Special Forces use air guns like this as sniper rifles. <laughs> but there are actually a few real experts on air rifles out there that can guide a newcomer on the right path. I'll admit it, I'm not a full-on expert on air guns, but I am an expert on hunting. And in the context of this video, it's going to be from a hunter's perspective, not a target shooter. You'll notice that the guns I use in this video are really not super expensive competition air guns. The guns in my arsenal basically have a purpose, and that purpose is to kill pests and maybe put some small game animals on the table. The air rifle I tend to stick with are accurate, reliable, slim enough to carry on a sling all day, and light enough to carry in the field. Remember, some of these air rifles are actually really heavy. And surprisingly, all the air rifles I use are relatively affordable. So sit back and relax while I introduce you to the world of hunting with an air rifle. So most of my viewers out there are going to ask, why hunt with an air rifle? You know, we all know that rimfire and centerfire cartridges are vastly superior to air rifles in virtually every ballistic and terminal measure. But there's several valid reasons to use an air gun and several circumstances where an air gun is actually a more sensible choice. Many people live under circumstances where owning a firearm is either illegal or extremely regulated. You know, if you travel around the world, unfortunately, it's like that for most people. Air guns are popular in many countries where firearm ownership is difficult or even prohibited. And for a lot of people, an air gun is their only option. I also have a friend who did something really stupid when he was 18 years old. And, you know, the he paid for it, and the state of California took away his Second Amendment right. He's 36 years old now and a successful small business owner and a good, you know, upstanding citizen. He loves to hunt, but because of his felony, he's limited to using his bow or an air gun. You know, he'd love to use a rimfire or a shotgun for small game, but he just legally can't anymore. So many people use air guns because that's all they can legally use. The second reason to hunt with an air gun is practicality. 
Many times hunting or pest control requires you to shoot on a very small property. And because of the air gun's limited trajectory, low energy and quietness, <laughs> it's the only safe and sensible choice for hunting or shooting on small properties or in uh, semi-urban areas. When you have neighbors and critters are messing with your chicken coop, I think an air rifle is the right tool because it won't spook your neighbors or your chickens. You know, uh, when the starlings start destroying your backyard grape vineyard, an air rifle is probably the right tool for the job. You know, when ground squirrels are ravaging your garden, an air rifle is probably the right tool for the job again. You know, uh, would you want to hunt Eurasian doves in May? Grab your air rifle and eat some dove poppers. <laughs> You know, uh, I have animals, especially with my chickens running around. I don't want to put out poison for rats and gophers. And the air rifle is a good fit for controlling those. So one of the most valuable attributes of an air rifle is pest control in areas where an actual firearm might not be legal, safe, or appropriate. And I'm not going to talk about Red Rider BB guns in this video because uh, I don't consider that really practical or ethical for hunting purposes. But uh, I will say that an air rifle that's going to be used for hunting or pest control must have the ability to fire at least a 17 caliber pellet. For the purposes of this video, I'm only going to cover the three most common types of air rifles used for hunting and pest control. The first type of air gun I'm going to cover is what's known as a pump gun. You know, for a lot of children out, a lot of kids out there, this was their first gun. A pump gun is charged by pumping the lever and the stock multiple times to fill a small air chamber within this gun. The amount of pumping you do will determine the amount of air pressure the pellet is fired with. My first real gun was a, a cheap Crossman 760. And I used that thing till it fell to pieces. My son's first pellet gun was actually this Crossman 760 Pump Master. And as you can see, he actually used the hell out of this thing. Uh, a cheap air rifle like this will send a 177 caliber pellet at about 600 feet per second if you pump it real good. And that's ethical enough to kill a small bird or a rat at a short distance. There's also some higher quality and more expensive pump air rifles out there, like the uh, uh, Benjamin pump rifle, and I think those are like $250 to $275. But these pump guns have one big weakness in all the price ranges. And that weakness is accuracy and consistency problems associated with variations in the air charges. You know, I, I really don't recommend a pump air gun for serious hunting or pest control duties. And the next type of air rifle is what's known as a piston gun. A piston gun uses a lever to cock an internal piston against a spring or air pressure. The first type of piston gun is what's known as a brake barrel gun. A brake barrel rifle is charged by using the barrel as a cocking lever. Just like that. Although some of these guns can be really accurate, they generally aren't as accurate as a good PCP gun. And to be honest with you, most of these are really hard to cock, with some of them being so hard to, uh, to cock that you know, most uh, women and children can't even use them. Brake barrel rifles also tend to suffer from what's known as barrel droop more than uh, any other type of air gun does. There's also piston guns with a fixed barrel that use a lever under the barrel to cock the piston. These are known as under lever rifles. These are significantly more expensive than most of the brake barrel guns but 
they are noticeably more accurate. And to confuse matters more, piston guns can be spring-powered or gas-powered. A gas piston gun will be quieter and easier to shoot. A spring piston gun, which is known as a springer, will have much better velocity and reliability for hunting purposes. So most people tend to uh, favor a springer gun for hunting. But all piston guns have a couple of big downsides. First of all, they absolutely destroy scopes that aren't made specifically for air guns. You know, if if you throw an expensive centerfire rifle scope like a Zeiss or a Leupold or a Swarovski on a Springer gun like this, it probably won't last very long. You have to buy a scope purposely built to withstand the forces of the piston on an air rifle. You know, uh, even your rings need to have special lugs or stops on them in order to deal with the brutal forces of a Springer air rifle. Another issue with piston guns is noise. A high velocity Springer gun like this might be louder than a rimfire. You know, with, with a light 17 caliber pellet, you might also be breaking the sound barrier and dealing with that noise. This particular Springer gun right here is actually louder than most of my 22 long rifle guns. So uh, don't think just because you're shooting an air rifle, it's always going to be whisper quiet. That's usually not the case with the Springer rifle. But Springer rifles are very popular because they're cheap. They're very reliable. They're reasonably accurate. They shoot high velocity and they don't require any air tanks or additional equipment to use. And lastly, we have PCP guns, which stands for precharged pneumatic guns. PCP guns offer the most to the shooter, in my opinion. They're the most accurate of all the air guns. Um, they're, they're fully adjustable, so you can customize uh, the velocity to the pellet. Um, they also have very little recoil and are the quietest of all the air guns, you know, since there's no piston violently slamming forward. PCP guns can also use normal scopes and rings on them, which is a huge bonus in my opinion. But everything isn't perfect in PCP land. PCP guns are the least reliable of all the air rifles. And if you're serious about a PCP gun, you better know how to deal with leaking seals. In addition to the fact that PCP air rifles are extremely expensive, they also require a lot of expensive gear to use. You know, most of us have a compressor and at least one really expensive carbon fiber SCBA bottle to handle our air needs. And that doesn't even count the fittings, adapters, and expensive fill systems that we use. If you're not serious about going balls deep into air guns, stay away from PCP guns. So let me show you some of the air rifles that I personally use for hunting and pest control. You know, uh, although I've owned and used a lot of really expensive air guns over the years. I'll be honest with you, I haven't been happy with most of them. An expensive price tag doesn't always mean quality in the air gun world, which is hard, you know, to wrap your head around if you come from a, a, a centerfire rifle hunting world, where usually a higher price tag means a better product. And... You know, I'll show you some of the guns I currently use. This cheap Gamo cost me $80, and I think I got my $80 worth out of this damn thing. It's actually made in Spain, not China, and actually it's put together pretty good. The stock is pretty damn solid for an air rifle. Actually, the stock is, you know, probably more solid than your average Tika centerfire rifle. Um and, you know, a really solid stock on an air gun is, is pretty rare, I think. 
Um, it's also more accurate and reliable than the $220 Gamo Swarm that I had to return back to Amazon. That was just a piece of shit. Um, and this gun also cocks very easy so a kid could use it. You know, uh, throw a scope and mounts on it. Uh, actually, the scope and mounts this, <laughs> this gun came with, throw that shit in the trash. That is complete junk. You know, and uh, since I put a, a better scope on it in this zero recoil mount right here, you know, this gun has been 100%. And right now, this is, I'd consider to be my loner gun. I also can't find a reason to get rid of my old Hatson 95. This thing is reliable, accurate, and actually has a fantastic trigger for an air gun. And it really launches 22 caliber pellets. Uh, fast enough to do some some damage on small game. The build quality of this gun, I think, is well above the $160 price tag for it. This actually has a real walnut sporter stock on it that makes me feel like I'm hunting with a real classic rifle when I take this thing out. This gun really isn't the best at anything, but it does everything reasonably well. This is probably the only air rifle that I've ever owned that can actually handle abuse like a center fire hunting rifle would. And uh, it also is a little bit quieter than some of the uh, the gamo guns I've shot. So um, I really like the Hatson 95. And this PCP gun right here is my Air Venturi Avenger. And this replaced my Marauder that I bought about 11 or 12 years ago, and it just finally died for good last year. Um, I also purchased a Gauntlet, and that thing was just a piece of crap compared to this Air Venturi Avenger. This Avenger right here, when I bought it, only cost $300, but I think it's like $340, $350 right now. But I paid $300 for this thing, brand new, which is absolutely amazing for a regulated 300 bar PCP gun. And this gun has made me 100% happy. I mean, it shoots holes on top of holes all day at 50 yards and is just whisper quiet with uh, my Donnie FL Tonto I have on the end of it. The charge on this last seems to last anyways a really long time because I can custom tune this gun to perfection with the pellets I'm shooting. And it's really light and it's easy to carry this thing around all day and hunt with it. And one of the cool things about this gun is this is actually kind of a, a bolt action rifle that shoots out of a uh, rotary magazine full of pellets. So it's really cool. You can actually do good follow-up shots out of it. You'll notice that avid air gunners call guys like you and me powder burners. <laughs> they call us this because we generally shoot ammunition that uses gunpowder as a propellant. Remember, in the firearm world, we use the word cartridge to describe our ammunition. In the air gun world, they use the word caliber to describe their ammunition. Air gun ammunition is not a cartridge. Air guns use four types of ammunition, BBs, uh, Diablo pellets, slugs, and plastic skirt pellets. BBs are inaccurate, unpredictable, and lack terminal performance. They're considered good for kids to shoot targets with out of their Red Rider BB gun, but BBs are considered a very poor choice for hunting. Diablo pellets are a self-stabilizing design that includes a head, a waist, and a skirt. When thinking of a pellet's ballistic properties, you have to forget everything you know about bullets. A Diablo pellet behaves completely different than a bullet. A centerfire rifle might fire a bullet with 50 to 60,000 PSI of pressure, 
where an air gun will have a tiny fraction of that pressure. Because of the low pressure, a pellet is designed to have as little bearing surface as possible. Basically, only the edge of the head and the end of the skirt touches the bore. When fired, this hollow skirt expands and forms a seal in the rifling of the air gun barrel, which maintains pressure and spin. As the Diablo pellet heads down range, this weight forward design keeps the pellet stabilized in flight, much like a badminton birdie. The drawback to the Diablo pellet is that they get unstable at really high velocities near the speed of sound. So when you get near the speed of sound, these pellets begin yawing and groups open up and keyholing starts on the target. Most people say to keep these pellets between 800 and 900 feet per second, and I found that to be true. Because Diablo pellets are so light, keeping velocity down is very hard in Springer guns, uh, especially with lead-free pellets. But with a regulated PCP gun, you could find the sweet spot for just about any pellet. Slugs are closer to an actual bullet than a Diablo pellet is. Because slugs have much more surface contact with the barrel, slugs need more pressure to achieve similar velocities as the Diablo pellet. Most people shoot slugs out of a high-pressure PCP gun to overcome this problem. Since slugs are not self-stabilizing, they require a lot of spin, much like a bullet does. Slugs really do have specific bore requirements, usually fast twist rifling. The benefit of slugs is the higher BC and additional weight to the projectile. Because of this, slugs are superior for longer ranges past about 80 yards. The downside to slugs is that they foul barrels faster, are expensive, and they're not as accurate at closer ranges. Plastic skirted pellets have a hard alloy at the tip encased in leaf. These used to be called sabot slugs because, back in the day because that's what they were. But the design evolved to where the projectile stays in one piece. So now we call them plastic skirted pellets. These pellets tend to move pretty damn fast and the alloy tip versions penetrate really good. But people generally don't like these plastic skirted pellets because they cost a lot and they tend to lack a lot of the accuracy that you'll find with a normal pellet. I've tried the expensive European ones and the Crossman ones and they all shoot like crap out of my gun. So I don't really recommend plastic skirted pellets. In the end, most hunters still use a Diablo style pellet because they're usually shooting animals within 50 yards to keep energy levels high enough for an ethical kill. You need to exit the powder burner zone with air gun ammo. Air gun ammunition behaves much differently than bullets do. Pellets can even corkscrew to the target. Did you know that? Also, don't chase velocity with an air gun. Like I stated, pellets almost always start shooting bad when you get somewhere above 900 feet per second. So if your Springer gun is shooting a 14 grain pellet at 1,000 feet per second, change to an 18 grain pellet and slow it down a little, and I can almost guarantee you it'll shoot better. In this video, I'm not going to be covering the so-called big bore air guns. In the air gun world, Basically, anything over 25 caliber is considered a big bore. And I won't cover those because an air gun, in my opinion, is a very poor substitute for a firearm when energy and velocity are important for ethically killing an animal. I'm sorry if that offends you, but that's the truth. Even if you take the mighty 50 caliber air gun, you know, the little 223 Remington has more has a large energy increase over it. You know, in many states, it's illegal to hunt deer with a 223. So most hunters consider shooting a deer with a 223 
to be unethical. So deer hunting with an air gun would be worse than that. A big bore air rifle is about as effective as a handgun with crappy bullets. So keep that in mind if you consider hunting with one of those. Most states don't allow big game hunting with an air gun. But if your state does, please keep your shots really close, you know, about 50 yards and in. And please understand that you're simply putting a straight hole in the animal with no shock and very little energy transfer. An arrow wound from a bow and arrow is much more devastating than a 50 caliber air gun. So please keep that in mind. So for anything where an air rifle would be better than using a rimfire or a centerfire rifle, we have three most common calibers to choose from. The 177 caliber, the 22 caliber, and the 25 caliber. And uh, I won't be discussing the 20 caliber in this video because I just, I have no experience with it. The 177 pellets are the classic pellet that everybody grew up with. You know, it'll, it'll go fast with very little effort and put small rodents and birds to sleep if the shooter does their part. The 177 pellets are also very cheap and abundant. The problem with 177 pellets is that they lack the mass to maintain velocity over distance. And they put very little energy on the target as a result. And because they're so light, it's often impossible to keep the velocity low enough to be accurate in some guns. Remember, speed can be really bad with an air gun. The 22 caliber pellet solves all the problems of the 17 caliber pellet, but it does it without creating any new problems. Most people find that the 22s shoot the widest range of pellets accurately. Because it's gotten so popular, 22 pellets are getting to be just as abundant as 177 caliber pellets. 22 caliber pellets in medium weights usually have that natural velocity that people are looking for. I think it's just the perfect caliber for gas and Springer piston guns because uh, it never seems to go too fast or too slow. The uh, 25 caliber air gun had a really low velocity and was kind of a novelty up until about the 1990s when they started making high velocity guns for this caliber. You know, it really caught on. The 25 caliber really started to catch on in about the last 15 years as uh, PCP guns became cheaper. And uh, accessories like uh, affordable home pumps and SCBA tanks became more available to the public. The 25 is considered a medium bore pellet, you know, and it, it comes in the same varieties of pellets as the 22 and 177 caliber do. But it needs a more powerful gun that provides enough pressure to drive the heavier slugs in 25 caliber. Modern regulated PCP rifles really made the quarter bore great in air rifles. You can crank the pressure up and really get some energy downrange with the 25 caliber nowadays. But the 25s aren't perfect. They really eat up the air supply in your PCP guns. In fact, 25 caliber pellets are also more expensive than the 22s and a lot less available. Sometimes they're really hard to find. And when you really think about it, the 25 does the same thing as the 20. Now let's discuss some legal and safety issues pertaining to hunting with air rifles. It's not always safe or legal to hunt with an air rifle. Many cities have ordinances against discharging an air gun within city limits. In many counties, they have laws that also limit the use of air guns. I lived in an in unincorporated county area, and my county law states that Air guns can't be used in a grossly negligent manner and can't be used in county parks. And the punishment is a $50 fine. So be aware of local laws pertaining to air gun use. Some cities have really stiff penalties for firing an air gun within city limits. 
Sometimes these penalties are just as harsh as using an actual firearm. And we're talking felony stuff here. And be aware of what animals are legal and illegal to shoot with an air gun. Migratory birds are completely illegal to harvest with an air gun by federal law. So you can't do that. And, uh, and this includes uh, most species of doves too, like the common morning dove. And of course, you need a hunting license to hunt s most small animals and you have to hunt them within season. Just because you're hunting with an air gun doesn't mean you can disregard hunting regulations and hunting laws. Let's discuss the biggest controversy within the air gun community when it comes to the law. And that's so-called silencers. Rule number one in the air gun world, do not call them silencers or suppressors. They're referred to as moderators or lead dust collectors. This is what the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms recently stated about air gun moderators. The moderators that are permanently attached to the barrel or part of the barrel design on the air gun will not get you in trouble with the law. But some of the screw-on moderators can, especially if the threads on the moderator match common firearm barrel threads. And always make sure that any moderator that you buy has writing on it that says for air gun use only. This is Donnie F.L. Tonto says for air gun use only on it. And finally, let's talk a little bit about safety here. An air gun has enough power to seriously injure or kill a person with perfect shot placement. Even the air coming out of the muzzle of, a, of an air gun can, can pierce the skin and cause an air embolism in your body. These are not toys. Every rule that applies to firearms applies to air guns too. Be especially careful if you're shooting in urbanized areas because air guns can penetrate right through wood fences and even plywood. Air gun pellets can also ricochet off hard surfaces or even concrete walls and do collateral damage. Many people like air guns because they can uh, plink in urban areas, but understand that what you're doing can get very dangerous very fast. And a ton of caution needs to be exercised when using compressed air for PCP or CO2 guns. Filling up a compressed air tank is no time to be distracted by anything. Also, be mindful that lines, fittings, and seals can burst and kill you while you're dealing with compressed air. Never use cheap eBay fill systems with parts of unknown quality. Take compressed air seriously. Also, it's become a fad in the air gun community to use old expired out-of-date air tanks for PCP use. I would personally never do this. It costs money to use a PCP gun safely. And, you know, that's something you're going to have to accept as part of the game. Dealing with compressed air is the most dangerous part of using an air gun, which is why many people choose to use Springer guns instead. In conclusion, an air rifle is more than a toy or something to just go out and shoot targets with. It can fill a valuable role in hunting and predator control. We just have to accept the limitations of such a system and realize that they'll never be the equal of a centerfire rifle, but that's where they shine when it's not safe or practical to use a firearm. I hope all you powder burners learned something today. Really, I hope this video gave you a deeper respect for the value of an air rifle. Not all air gunners are 45-year-old felons living in their mom's basement. Many air gunners are doing serious business with their air guns, protecting 
property from rats, squirrels, gophers, iguanas, and pest birds. And some are even putting a little bit of meat on the table with their air gun. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you find my channel worthy of your subscription. You can reach me at desertdogoutdoors at gmail.com. As always, thank you for watching and good hunting.